The PLI announcement of 1.45 lakh crores across 10 sectors till 2025 is a strategic policy intervention coming on the back of COVID-19 and the general slowdown. This is expected to boost production, lead to job creation, and ultimately be a major kicker for GDP and ultimately taxes as well. So it's good for the government too. The scheme has been formulated, I believe, on the back of successful implementation of almost 40,000 crore scheme for manufacturing and export of mobile phones in India and the input on the pharmaceutical. It is important for us to actually look at what happened to the first scheme and therefore, why are we going into this next scheme? Uh, what are the benefits? Which are the sectors which are going to be taken care of? And how can this really help transform manufacturing from its current 16 to 17% of GDP to the target of 24%. So I'm joined with me today in conversation with Mr. Manish, who I think is an expert on the field, has helped guide a lot of the FIKI policy uh, and helped us make the right interventions to the government. Uh, I believe that the benefit of the first scheme which was announced wherein uh, the mobile and the manufacturing industry, not only have they attracted some of the big global names like Apple and Samsung, but also the estimate is that they will produce over 10.5 lakh crores worth of incremental production, of which 6.5 lakh crores will be exported. So that's a, a good boost to our export target. Uh, and all that will happen between now and 2025. Uh, it's also estimated that to create over 2 lakh uh, direct jobs and about 6 lakh indirect jobs. So from being part of global supply chains, from attracting investment uh, to employment generation, there are some deep implications of the PLI. So let me hand over to you, Manish, to really help us decipher for our members what it means, uh, what they should be doing on the back of this great policy announcement. Over to you. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Reddy. And uh, I'll give you a sense of uh, two perspectives to begin with. One is uh, why PLI? And uh, the second perspective is what will be the outcome after, let's say, five or 10 years when we will look back in history that what has it done? And a few of us have uh, mentioned that this possibly is going to be a game changer. I personally believe that this is going to be a catalyzer. And the very reason uh, industry needed PLI for obvious reasons, and I'll mention a few of them in my in my comments later, is to do away with the existing disability of our country because of variety of factors. The first of uh, all would be the economies of scale itself, which helps reduce the operating costs of the companies and hence the cost of production. And the second would be the existing backward integration which exists in the country, which essentially means that how much of the total assembly which we do in the country consumes components which are sourced and manufactured locally. And third, possibly, which will be a natural outcome is that when we create this competitiveness, how competitive are we globally and how much of uh, the global supply chain is managed from India? So I think the underlying objective of this PLI is to enable backward integration, create economies of scale and hence competitiveness, and position India on the global map and start to export in a larger way. And the recent announcement of uh, PLI in a very important category, air conditioners, I believe uh, is going to be a game changer. And there are again, few reasons to that. The first and foremost is air conditioner is an industry or a vertical, which has a huge potential to create jobs. And the reason I say that, and if I use an analogy of comparing it with any other product category, say a televisions or a mobile phones, Air conditioner not only creates jobs into manufacturing, but imagine when it gets installed, you need hundreds and thousands of engineers to install the air conditioner. And then throughout the life cycle of an AC, you need annual maintenance. So in that sense, the number of jobs, let's say per million air conditioners produced would far exceed many categories. So in that sense, this is a job creator. And second is, the penetration rate of this category in the country is less than 5%, way to go. In that sense, a massive potential to not only produce locally, but also to cater to global markets. And I'll quickly give you one data point here. We produce 5 million air conditioners in the country today. 
to cater to a demand of approximately 7 million air conditioners which is less than 5% of penetration on the other hand china produces 110 million air conditioners annually out of that 80 million are exported this is a huge opportunity for our country to explore and finally i believe once uh, economies of scale start to happen and penetration starts to improve there is a huge potential in backward integration and interestingly in air conditioners top five components contribute more than 80% of bill of material so it's something like low hanging fruit and we have the capability to sort of uh, develop those technologies into motors into aluminum foils into copper tubings and i really feel very delighted to share with you i'm sure you would have observed that that interestingly the entire industry has unified for a common purpose and both the multinational companies where in possibly the intent would be to make their indian subsidiary part of their global supply chain and hence enable exports out of here and the domestic players where i think the intent is to scale up manufacturing and expand value addition have really come together for this common purpose and cause and therefore we could in record time of last 4 to 5 months come up with very clear recommendations to the government and i must really applaud and appreciate the efforts and the kind of decision quick decision making which has happened and it is game changing look at we started this conversation in the month of april may and today we have that announcement coming in so in that sense industry is really encouraged and feel very responsible to take this forward i think as we can see multiple sectors are going to be benefited from this uh, there's agri there's food processing there's of course the pharmaceutical where india had a very significant position and this is aimed at regaining uh, not just our capability but dominance in the api area as well this is a, a mega plan and uh, i think it will will benefit auto components telecom networking products a specialty steel white goods and of course the air conditioners which you you spoke so well about uh can we you know understand from a member's perspective what should they be doing now what are the next steps uh because ultimately for for fiki members it's about their business as well so what would you recommend first is uh, i mean needless to say that fiki is a apex body and again i feel uh, very happy that uh, fiki has played its uh, role quite efficiently and this is not only i am saying in the capacity of being the chair of electronics manufacturing committee i've been hearing good feedback coming in from other chambers so what has happened in last few months is that we were able to come together with the other focused chambers within the industry so cmi is one of them which is uh, the chambers for electronics uh, manufacturers and rama is uh, specifically handling the refrigeration and air conditioning industry so first is all of us have to really come together because now we have to you know come up with nuances of how the pli scheme should actually look like for various sectors for which the announcement has happened and therefore we need to quickly create a very clear consensus on the intent and what how the scheme should look like and then make quick proposals to the government so that is my first uh, request and expectation from all the members and second which is most important is to get into execution and uh, the most important aspect of uh, starting this uh, getting executed is to look at aggregation of demand and here we have some clear benchmarks already available possibly coming out of automotive industry and and i am very happy to share with you that members have already started to take that approach and when i say that uh, they have sort of risen to this occasion and found themselves coming together for a common purpose i specifically mean and i'm giving you one example that uh, in last about couple of months we had five meetings with with the entire industry and the and the members to look at that how can we look at aggregation of uh, aluminum say for air conditioning industry and then we came together meeting with hindalco team to see that how when industry can come up and aggregate this demand how can they look at investing into creating specific requirement uh, related components for the air conditioner industry and again i am very delighted to share with you that reasonable progress has happened to the extent that hindalco has already set a two phase program for creating those investments to cater to the demand of uh, the local air conditioning industry so i believe that uh, the biggest of responsibility with us simultaneously to clarify the uh, nuances of how the pli scheme should look like for air conditioners get into execution also so that we move fast uh, in terms of executing what we all created the kind of vision we created for all of us 
How about other areas, other sectors, uh, Manish? Battery storage, solar oh. PV. Uh, there's oh. there's electronics. I think the pharmaceutical, which is I think the second largest segment which the government is focusing on, and also oh. there's a very important date which each sector is setting. By which time you have to put in your initial applications. I also would uh, urge all members to actually in, in the next three days, the FICI team will be putting up guidelines, uh, amounts, formats, and schemes, and seek inputs on who would like to understand further in terms of collaborations, technical knowledge required, and FICI will help handhold members into taking advantage of the PLI scheme. So Absolutely. can you share your sure. thoughts on this? Because I'm that. I'm very committed uh, that Fiki will help its members take advantage of this scheme. So so few things I'll quickly give you the bigger picture of uh, the work which we are doing. So air conditioners was part of that, and in my responsibility being chair into electronics manufacturing committee, and I'm also on the chair of uh, uh, the energy committee of Fiki. So so for uh, uh, verticals were identified out of the initial 12 and then subsequently they went up to 24 uh, in the consideration of uh, DPIT where uh, Minister himself was very actively involved, periodically conducting reviews and meetings. So those four verticals which uh, in some sense uh, together with the other members, uh, people like me were responsible were one was obviously air conditioner which I mentioned. Second was television, again a very strategic category because a larger part of bill of material uh, is imported for assembling televisions in the country. And the bigger intent of government of India is to look at fab manufacturing to happen in the country and TV plays a major role over there. The third one was uh, CCTV cameras. And again, a very important category. I'll quickly give you a sense of the kind of work which we are doing and how members are getting involved and what are the expectations uh, from them when we look at the time ahead. And fourth was very strategic electronic components because they cut across almost all the industries. Uh, not Correct. only specific. And that was what 40,000 crores for electronics. So that's yes. a significant allocation. Yeah. Absolutely. So I'll quickly give you a fair sense of the kind of approach which is possibly cutting across all these four. So, so words like PLI and PMP are cutting across all four. And then we have to very clearly decide and sort of define that what is the strategic objective of every category. So while in air conditioners, I mentioned backward integration, job creation, and then exports in future. In case of electronic components, it is very clear that the kind of impact this category creates on the import bill is huge and uh, possibly the second largest after uh, crude import. And therefore, it is important for us to have a clear phased approach in ensuring that we take two steps in the time ahead. The first one is the logical one where we look at populating the PCBs in the country. Because these PCBs and the assemblies are going into almost all the industries, whether it is medical electronics, automotive, telecom, consumer electronics, and so on and so forth. So hence, we need a phased approach for manufacturing, and we call that as PMP. And this is falling into consideration, and that dialogue is still going on, and it is work in progress. And I'm very confident that this will also proceed fast. And then the second is to let component manufacturing happen in the country. And I think that is the big aim. And again, members are coming together. And some amount of tactical work is happening currently. While strategically we have clarified that what are we aiming at and what are the interventions which are needed. I think the expectations uh, from uh, members is that uh, because over a period of time, a very complex structure of uh, these components getting mapped with respect to variety of HSN codes have happened. And this is a very complex tactical exercise. So we've been doing that for last couple of months. And I think I would encourage and uh, request members to make sure that they provide their inputs and participation into this very large activity because this is highly fragmented for every industry. It is sort of mapped uh, uh, in a very complex situation. So if we can clarify that, uh, how do we segregate various uh, assemblies or components into respective HSM codes and then clarify what is the policy required to uh, eliminate some of uh, uh, them into a different uh, approach. And the ones where we look at uh, immediate assembly to happen in the country into a different uh, sector. So that is one request which I would uh, uh, make to the members. So that is about electronic components. CCTV is very strategic again, because in line with Prime Minister's uh, vision of uh, Aap Nirbhar Bharat, I think uh, uh, the proposal which uh, members uh, from the industry of uh, CCTV cameras came up with was how can we create Aap Nirbhar Bharat 
to Rakshit Bharat. Because this is not only about letting those products getting manufactured in the country, but also about how can we make the country more safe. And therefore, FIKI is now coming up with recommendations of some of the policy changes which encourages uh, you know, uh, the, the builders and architects uh, to improve surveillance outside their buildings when the construction happens. So those kind of policy interventions are being requested. So again, my request and expectation to members is to come up with those kind of ideas which can create larger rub-offs beyond starting to manufacture those products and components in the country. And finally, televisions. Again, as I mentioned, uh, massive potential because larger part of import bill uh, goes into importing components like TV panels and uh, assemblies and so and so forth. So again, uh, the expectation is how can we come, large multinationals can come up with technology proposals. And in this whole process, we look at a potential collaboration between uh, large Indian companies and people who have access to technology to come together and create th those participations. So again, Fiki is making an effort in this direction to create this outreach uh, towards uh, people who have technology available in this space. I think we should really thank you, Manish, for all these insights. I believe it's a significant step. Uh, I believe it's quite clear that there is no correlation between the MEIS scheme and this scheme. These are done for two completely different reasons. Uh, and therefore, it is primarily to ensure that Indian industry is competitive, uh, that it takes out some of the infrastructure uh, gaps that we currently have and therefore enables industry to grow. I also uh, you know, think it's a very important point to iterate that while initially large companies may first get into it, the downstream support that they need from ancillary production is also going to be very significant. So the entire industry can look forward to staying tuned on what is the evolution of the PLI scheme, how does it impact their own sector and how can they participate in this potential upswing in, in the manufacturing sector? FIKI will continue to post on its website uh, the latest developments and advisories. We'll also continue conversations like this, uh, you know, really good one with Manish. Thank you so much for clarifying. Uh, we will bring in experts on other sectors, the pharma sector, the, the food and processing sector, so that in each one, our members can get deeper insights and be able to ask the right questions so that their company benefits. Uh, and ultimately, most importantly, we're able to generate jobs, grow our GDP, and the entire country benefits. So all the very best, and thank you so much. Namaste. Thank you, President. Thank you so much.